Hello everybody, I am Meng Sing and this is Ethan. We are proud to present our presentation for the Singapore Open Co-Space Finals. Our team ID is SP226056 and our team name is Nanyang underscore F. We both have, have two years of Robo Cup experience, counting this year, and we both participated in Robo Cup Singapore Open 2021, RCAP Co-Space Rescue U12. While Meng Sing has participated in Robo Cup Asia Pacific 2021 Aichi Japan. This is the executive summary of the preliminary challenge, which is mainly us adding improvements to our code used in the warm-up challenge, then being speed optimization, depositing strategies, border optimization, wall tracing, X and Y coordinates optimization, and different learning ratios. After implementing all of these strategies, our score increased by 45%, which is a lot. Moving along to the task analysis section, the, the challenge can be broken down into many new tasks like collecting objects, avoiding obstacles, and depositing objects. In this slide, we will be talking about speed optimization. In the preliminary map, we noticed that there were more objects on one side of the map, thus we coded the robot to move faster when on that side using the X and Y coordinates. Continuing from the previous slide, we also realized that there were more sign objects spawning at the bottom of the map. Hence, we coded the robot to move slower there to collect more sign objects. We also coded the robot to deposit only at least when one of the following conditions are met. The robot must have one set of red, cyan, and black objects in its inventory. The robot will deposit if the time is below 60 seconds, or there is a super or super plus object in the inventory. The first condition will generate a super object upon depositing, and the second will ensure that the robot will get as many remaining points as possible. These are the conditions for the robot to deposit and their reasoning. Firstly, we get the robot to generate at least a set of red, cyan, and black, so that we can at least generate a super object upon this depositing. The robot will not collect both sets of red, fine, and black, as it will take up too much time and it's not worth it. As mentioned above, when the robot has at least one deposit condition met, it will turn downwards into the bottom left deposit zone. When one sensor senses orange, the robot will turn into the deposit zone, such that both color sensors sense orange and the robot will deposit successfully. We used borders in the preliminary round, which helps us to optimize the maximum possible, possible points. When the robot enters the special blue zone on the left or right side, the robot will collect at least red, one red object before leaving the zone. The robot turns back into the zone if it does not have enough red objects. This is important as it is the only place to get red objects. In this slide, I will talk about how we more trace the money. We coded a wall tracing function based on the time variable and ultrasonic sensor. It is known that the super or super plus objects spawns along 15 cm away from the perimeter of the wall. We coded the robot to wall trace in the last 1 minute 30 seconds of the round as at that time, all the super and super plus objects would have been accumulated and the wall tracing will be more effective. And why positions help us to move to certain areas, which is used for square targeting. It also helped us to differentiate turning ratios in various areas and avoids traps with different turning ratios, depending on the robot's position. For turning okay. ratios, we experimented with it for quite some time, but we decided to settle on 40, negative 40. When the robot is stuck in a corner, it will use the ratio of negative 50, negative 100 to get out. When it is in position x1, y2, it will turn downwards to face the center of the map, where some blacks and cyans spawn. Lastly, at position Y0, it turns at 25, negative 10 to help it enter the deposit zone more smoothly. This is our robot logic flow chart. In a nutshell, the robot will see if it's touching a track and then it will avoid it. If the robot is facing a wall, it will turn left or right depending on the presence of deposit condition. If it detects an object and loaded object is smaller than 6, it will collect it. If the robot has a deposit conditions met, it will deposit. If it doesn't, however, it will turn out and find more objects. However, if the robot does not fulfill any of these conditions, it will just move forward before repeating the loop again. In debugging the code, we, fi we fixed two problems, which were the robot getting stuck in a corner and how the robot stops moving in the blue zone. For the first problem, we made a condition under turning ratios, and for the second problem, we adjusted the color sensor range. Now we would like to show you our game video. Please enjoy.
Through the process of coding and debugging the robot, we have picked up important skills. These include time management, perseverance, discipline, diligence. This experience also helped us to learn more about the flow of code in our AI robot. Useful resources include the YouTube channel, RCEP Academy, as we listen to other presenters and use their ideas in our code. We would also like to thank our robotics teacher, who aided us along the way and taught us many useful strategies. Thank you for watching our video, and please leave a like if you enjoyed it. Bye!